Johnston in to Nflantla Neni, the finance minister. So we should be able to, to, tend, to tend this up. Minister, um, looking at the current amendment talks that have been going on in the country around Section 25, land expropriation without compensation, did they have any bearing on the numbers that recently came out? What was the, what was its, what was the impact of these talks and the process to amend Section 25 to allow land expropriation without compensation on these numbers, if there was any? I wouldn't say entirely not or entirely uh, they had an impact, but if you look at the timing, <clears throat> this is the second quarter numbers. Uh, it is unlikely that the latest developments would actually uh, be, be filtered in. I think mainly it's um, straightforward issues like uh, the, um, the tapering of the drought right, just at the end, and I would say that the second or third round effects also of the drought in agriculture. Um, as, uh, as you would know, uh, I mean, I'm a small scale farmer. They say after you know after the boom, and they, they had made uh, some recent uh, harvests, and uh, you, you, the land need to rest, you rest the land in order to be able to um, replant. But at the same time, I would um, I'd imagine um, if, if we look at uh, these numbers, they, they are a reflection of uh, the adjustment from the previous performance. Okay. Minister, the, the increase in v, VAT earlier in the year, um, to what extent do you think it contributed? Because I think it's been cited, well, not VAT uh, per se, but a decrease in household uh, um, expenditure and consumption. Um, so one can argue that VAT increase had, a, had an impact. Look, <coughs> we, we, we really cannot... Uh, uh, deny the fact that the household, the consumers, are actually having a tough time. Uh, you know, uh, the fuel price, uh, the rent increase, but uh, all of those will have uh, their short-term impact on expenditure, which uh, would, uh, really once the consumers have absorbed that, they should actually be able to recover from that. But it did, it did have an impact. Yes, Mr. Minister, I mean, on the political side of it, when the president came in, I mean, there was a lot of uh, improvement in terms of sentiment towards the country, the rent got picked up as well. <coughs> but there is a sense that perhaps government has been too slow in implementing structural reforms, if you said that they are still putting them in place. I mean, will, will you say that is a fair opinion, a fair observation? Look, sentiment uh, indeed did improve, but I must say that uh, confidence actually in, in, uh, by its nature does not uh, you know, endure unless uh, we see you know, uh, demonstrable uh, in, in implementation. Of course, the pressure is, uh, is a bit uh, uh, too much, but I think <coughs> um, we are making good progress. And some of these things uh, cannot be implemented overnight. And it is important that we are careful in how we implement them. Uh, and as I say, they are underway not just in discussions, but in putting in place uh, mechanisms of implementing uh, all of the structural reforms. Um, if you look at um, the mining side, because you know we have those four elements uh, in order to uh, boost confidence, we were looking at uh, the mining side. We just know in the, in the mining sector is actually done fairly well in terms of consulting with the stakeholders, and uh, that is running its course as we speak. Um, the issues of uh, the spectrum of these, also all of those things have uh, legislation to be dealt with in order to be able to implement the visa regulations, all of those and uh, that uh, the areas that we're looking at uh, dealing with uh, the, the bottlenecks and uh, barriers uh, to it. Um, actually, the process of being finalized, but then in addition, the, uh, the, the, the package, the real reform package that uh, comes out of the, the cabinet process is also in, in the pipeline. And then we understand the impatience of uh, you know, the South African public because we want things delivered as of yesterday, but uh, it's not everything that can be done. Minister, can I just ask you to please repeat your initial re reaction? We're taking it live and they, okay. they couldn't hear you properly back home. 
um, with regards to the implementation of the um, structural reform? No, with regards to the technical recession that you are currently in after State's essay's remarks. Oh, okay. I, yes. uh, initially, I said that uh, we received the numbers when we were in the, in the session there. Uh, our first um, observation was that it is uh, the uh, it is agriculture that has actually um, uh, taken the biggest knock at 29 percent, but it is indeed a, a, a normalization or a readjustment from um, uh, how agriculture has performed in the past. It overperformed or it performed exceedingly well in the, in the last two quarters of last year, in 27, uh, 2017, and then started contracting at the beginning of uh, 2018 at 33% and now we're at least 29%, taking off about 0.8% uh, of, uh, of uh, our growth. Uh, Minister, I wanted to ask just a follow-up to your previous answer. Do you have a timeline perhaps around when exactly government will conclude those structural reforms and how important is it that that process is expedited? The timeline is indeed that we would want to expedite. That's, that's what I would want to say. But then there are processes, as you know, where uh, some of these things are already underway, but uh, there are formal processes, uh, some of them culminating in, uh, in the upcoming uh, investment conference that the president uh, is going to be holding later in, uh, in October, but also the medium-term budget policy statement, because some of these are actually policy uh, issues. Uh, so I would uh, mention that. Uh, we are looking at. By the time we go to the medium term the policy statement, we should have uh, concluded on that one. But some of them are underway in the time of the Minister Shannon Ibrahim, Group Foreign Editor for Independent Media. I just wanted to ask you, it's not particularly relating to the recession, um, do you have any idea in terms of the previous tranche of $60 billion that the Chinese gave to African countries as development financing, how much of that money went to South Africa in the form of loans? Look, I don't have a number of hand because as you would know, um, that um, you know our dealings with uh, China are at uh, a number of levels. One, we had agreements that were signed at, at, at the level of BRICS. One of those were at the level of uh, FOCA, where our institutions like the Development Bank of Southern Africa had uh, dealings with uh, the China Development Bank. Uh, so it will be in, in many areas. Uh, we actually would just have to go into the numbers, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, if we look at the numbers, we'll be able to see how much of it. But it's, at, at the same time also, you'll find that we would sign the memorandum, uh, memorandum of understanding and then move on to look at real agreements for each of those, and it depends on which category it falls, that you would know when and how much we do it. Because there wasn't any particular al allocation that so much is for South Africa, so much is for this country, and some of them were actually um, our regional pro projects. Okay, I'm taking the last round. Minister, can you please just tell us, are these loans that we're getting from the Chinese largely dollar denominated? If so, what, does, what, what impact does this have to the South African rand, particularly looking at the debt of our local currency? What impact does it have on us? It, it depends also on the nature of the project, because there are normally projects uh, uh, bound. So it depends on the nature of the pro uh, project. And then uh, with China, we have uh, a very good um, arrangement in terms of uh, determining whether we, it would be rent denominated or, or, or dollar denominated. So both as members of BRICS, and we've uh, tested the issue of uh, issuing debt now in, uh, in, in uh, local currency. And that's what we are uh, mainly focusing on it as a country. But it normally depends on the nature and the type of the uh, project that's being implemented. No, good. Covered? Thank you. Sure. We are learning from the Chinese minister. Um, thank you. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> Sorry, Minister, just the last one for my part. Are you amongst the ministers who are lined up to testify at the State Capital Commission? Watch the space. <laughs> Watch the space, meaning? Uh, meaning, you know, a lot of us might be appearing before the State Capital. Can you just confirm the issues of the form, your former finance, deputy finance minister, Mr. B. Jonas, basically saying that procurement was taken away from the Treasury Department during your tenure and of the meeting that you had at the balcony, fearing that your offices may be bugged? 
That's a very good question for the Commission itself to ask. Thank you. Can I? No, no, no. Okay, one. that's so, the last yeah. question, guys. Yeah, on the session, there seems to be a lot of, I don't know if panic is the right word to use. Uh, you know, back at home, I'm reading a lot of articles about analysts that are talking about how bad this is. And I just want to get from the Ministry, how bad is this? What does it mean for our economy? And should people really panic? Look, I don't think uh, people should panic. Of course, uh, it's okay for people to be concerned, but it's a, which is a good sign that people are, um, you know, are paying an interest in their in their country when the, when this happens. And I think it's also going to call on all of us to work together uh, to lift the country. I spoke earlier about uh, the investment uh, uh, conference that is coming. There is the job summit that is coming. We are building up to the medium term budget policy statement. We, there is going to be a consultation process, and uh, it would be important to, and, and it's going to be critical to hear the views of uh, ordinary South Africans also, uh, but uh, in a constructive manner, because um, I think we just had an opportunity here the nation to work together towards rebuilding. Mm. So don't panic, government is working on a plan. It's working with South Africans also. And we are Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Thank you very much.